For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. So we can see there that death rules over everyone. But God has a gift that trumps sin and death. And this gift is forgiveness of sins and being counted as righteous or clean from sin through his son. And notice it says there in that verse that the gift is given to those who receive it. So we'll have a look at that in a second. But before we get there, just turn the page over to Romans 6, verse 23. Put it on the screen as well. It says there, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord our Lord so we could see there that from sin all we get is death but God has given us this gift which includes eternal life because we're no longer subject to that consequence of sin uh, when we're forgiven so we're no longer subject to death in Christ but how do we receive this gift how can we have a part in it so there's a few passages there that you can write down or get off me later but we're just gonna have a look at John 6 verse 40 so if you just turn back to John Gospel of John Chapter 6. So from the NLT version, it says, For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life I will raise them up at the last day so we can see here that to receive God's gift we need to believe in Jesus it's through belief and our commitment to following him is um, that's how we are able to receive forgiveness and are made righteous in his eyes And we're also promised eternal life, as it says there. But you also notice that this this verse suggests that we don't receive eternal life straight away. God has promised that he will raise us up at the last day. So when is the last day that it talks about here? Well, if we turn over to 1 Corinthians 15... So in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 22 to 23, it says, Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. But there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest. Then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. So Christ will return to set up God's kingdom on earth, as it talks about um, in the rest of the chapter. And this is when the dead will be raised. So anyone who knows enough about God's gift that we've talked about to make a decision about whether 
uh, whether to receive it or not, will be raised for judgment. And it's those who have responded to this gift by living in faithful obedience that will receive this reward of eternal life. And those who don't respond will receive the same as those who never heard about it. They won't have any more or any less because God's not a cruel God. He won't torment people in hell, but they'll simply receive uh, the default of all humans and won't have a future when they die. So what does this mean for us? We can see that we've got a choice. <clears throat> and looking at the aim of uh, for tonight, the question of is there more to life, we can see that the answer is definitely yes. But the choice is up to us. We have been given free will by God. We can choose to live our lives as we want now and we might have a great life now and that's that's up to us but we know that there's no future afterwards or we can choose the the eternal life that God has promised us so we've got a choice between eternal death no future when we die or eternal life this gift that we can have as a result of faith in Jesus Christ. And <clears throat> just in case you're wondering um, about eternal life, we've talked a lot about what death offers and um, what death entails. But what about eternal life? Well, let's... We'll just quickly look at this verse here. You don't have to turn to it. But in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, it says that no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. So we can see from that that it's going to be whatever God has prepared for us, it's going to be amazing. And... I'm just going to put up, I won't go through it all, but a comparison between the two choices. So as we said, we've got death on the left and life on the right. Death, as we can see, doesn't offer very much, but the eternal life that God promises is not going to be like the life that we live now it's going to be so much better we can't even imagine what it's going to be like and I've put some references up there in the Bible of a few of the things that we're told will be in God's kingdom where, which is going to set up here on earth and we'll be able to enjoy all of that forever because of this eternal life that we can have but obviously, the choice is up to us. The choice is up to us to make now. And so, <clears throat> in summary, we'll just have a, we'll go through what we've talked about. So we've seen that life is, as described by the Bible, man is made from dust. And... God's spirit is what gives us life. So they're the two ingredients that God has used to create man. And this is our opportunity now. This is our opportunity to accept the gift that God has given us. Because we know that in death, when God's spirit leaves us, when we die, we, we, it's like going to sleep. We're... There's no consciousness and our bodies will decompose and return to dust and there's no more, uh, <coughs> no more knowledge and um, no more opportunity. But if we've made the choice that God has offered us 
the, to take the gift that he's offered, then we have a hope of resurrection. And we know that when Christ returns, he's going to resurrect all those who have made that choice. And there's going to be a judgment made um, on those who know enough to have made the choice. And eternal life will be given to the faithful. Um, and eternal death will be given to the unfaithful. And so, just want to highlight um, once again that now is the time to make that choice. I'm just going to leave this diagram up on the screen um, as sort of a summary of what we've talked about. And we can see that there is so much more to life, but we make the choice now. Thanks. Thanks for your presentation tonight, Mike. I think we've clearly seen that uh, despite what common Christian understanding might be, We've seen tonight that the Bible clearly, clearly states that when we die, we effectively, we effectively sleep or are unconscious, and that this is quite simply the natural nature of a, of a of sin. However, Mike has also gone through and shown us that this does not necessarily have to be this way. That, as he said, if we make the right choice and while we have life, we have opportunity we have a chance of being raised from the dead for everlast for immortal life. So we'd like to thank everyone for coming along tonight and those watching in online for, to, uh, for watching our presentation. Um, Christadelphians who meet here at this hall will have a, another presentation next week on the 17th of September, God willing, where John Nichols will be presenting on the subject keys to unlocking Bible prophecy and Bible prophecy is one of those things that if you're wondering why we believe the Bible is the inspired word of, inspired word of God, looking at Bible prophecy is, a, is key to our confidence as Christadelphians that the Bible is inspired by God. Um, so we'll now conclude to, tonight with prayer and thanks for supper if we'd all stand. Dear God, we draw together now, thankful for the time that we've had this evening, to open your word, to discuss the Bible and to discuss life, death and resurrection, a hope of everlasting life if we choose your way. Dear God, we know that your way may not be the way that the much of the world goes, but if we, in faith, look and learn about you, about the truth of your word, we can find such an amazing hope. And dear God, we pray that you would work with each of us here that in that day when we believe your son will return to this earth, that the dead will be raised, that we may be there and welcomed into everlasting life, eternal life in your, in your kingdom. Dear God, we thank you also now for the supper and pray that, because we realise that we are blessed to have all things in abundance in this land and we are thankful for it. Dear God, we offer this prayer now through your son's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.